It's making me tear up. Oh my god, I've just done my makeup. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, hello, Papa. Uh -huh. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today, we're doing something slightly different. So, if you follow me on my Twitter, you will know that I have been thinking of doing this for a while now. And I'm not the first person to come up with like a makeup and type scenario. So, um, Bailey Sarian, Sarian, I'm sorry if I pronounced the name wrong, started the um, Murder Mystery Makeup Monday where she did a face and talk about murder mysteries. There's um, Movies and Makeup which was done by Jamie French. There's, there's multiple people that do like a makeup and type video. So I am in no way, shape or form claiming this is an original idea. But I have been wanting to for a while to incorporate books and beauty together. So I'm going to try this out. The lighting might not be the best because I don't have a proper lighting set up for makeup anymore. So I'm going to try my best to do this and see if it works. So, as a bit of a different way of doing my wrap-ups, I wanted to start by doing um, a series called Books on a Beat, where I beat my face while I share thoughts and opinions on books. So, I, I'm going to start by trying this as part of my wrap-ups. If it works out well and I enjoy doing it and it goes down well, then I might do looks based on books that I do as like individual reviews as well but makeup takes a while so it's a time thing as well so I'm gonna try and make this video as concise as possible so it's not like a million hour tutorial and I'm gonna try and keep it brief succinct but you know I do like to ramble which is why I started with most of my face on <laughs> most of my face on with yeah with the majority of my face on so right you'll see so I have my foundation on which is in case you care at all about the makeup side of things I will be listing the makeup that I use down below as well so my skin tone is Sahara Light 30 which is the body shop I do not use bougie products I am very basic. The concealer under my eyes is Collection Last Imperfection um, Lemon and Fair. I use a very old Makeup Revolution bronzer in the shade Kiss and my eyebrows are literally a NYX pencil. That is the base at the moment. I've used Rimmel Stay Back in Silky Beige to mattify my face. And you don't need to use this as an eyeshadow base but for all my eyeshadows I use the P. Louise um, eyeshadow base in shade 2. I don't know if it's called shade 2 anymore, but that's what it's called. So, the way that this is going to work is the makeup look I'm going to be doing is going to be inspired by my favourite book of the month. But I'm going to rate my, I'm going to go through and quickly give an overview of the books that I read in January. I'm going to start with the one that I rated the lowest. I do also need to preface this by saying for the majority of this you might have to trust the process. You'll find that a lot of people say that because it potentially at the beginning could look very messy but it will all turn out pretty in the end. Fingers crossed. Like I said I've not done this type of thing before so we're just hoping and praying and praying and hoping that it goes well. So, you'll have to let me know how it goes and what you think of it at the end. So, the look that is going to be, that I'm going to be doing is be inspired by my favourite book of the month and you will find out in the end what that will be. So, let's get into it. I also want to say that anything I use is my choice. Any makeup buffs out there that don't like particular brands, I'm sorry. I purchased this with my own money, therefore I'm going to use it until I have used it all. So, um, I will be using a bit of black, which is a difficult colour to work with. 
and it will be from the Conspiracy palette. So, I will also be using orange from there as well. So, my lowest rated book of the month, so far, A Sword Named Callum. So, anybody that watches my vlogs will know that that was a struggle. That was a struggle. I put that book off for most of the month and I only read it near the end of the month. So, um, the writing, I literally got maybe 20 pages in. The writing style was very clunky. It was mixing up tenses. It was, it was, it was a whole thing. I put it in the chat with the girls and I asked them their opinions on um, whether it was me or whether it genuinely was a pretty abysmally written book. And unfortunately, it can't. The consensus was it just wasn't really well written so yeah there was that So again, for anyone interested, I just go in and do my crease colour first and just pack on the colour, which is why I said trust the process <laughs> because I need, I need it, I need it. I'm just going to get a slightly lighter colour and blend out the edges and while I do this, we are going to be talking about the next book, which is a soft DNF. Technically, I should have done this first, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It's a soft DNF for now, and that's, again, you're probably not surprised, Scrapling <laughs> Children of Dragons. And if you watched my TBR video for um, January, you will realise that I for, didn't realise when I did my January TBR that this genuinely was a book. I thought I'd miswritten something. I thought I'd misworded something. It just wasn't computing in the brain that this was a book. I started reading it on the 31st thinking I could start reading it and <laughs> yeah. It's just not the greatest. So it starts off talking about the characters um, and introducing a couple of the characters to you, and I just I just couldn't couldn't mesh again writing style. I just couldn't mesh with it. But the premise it sounds like something I still might actually like. So I'm not DNFing this permanently. This is why this is a very soft DNF. So I blend the edges out up to the top. I look like a weirdo. I'm going to tip in to another orange colour. And I want to keep going into my crease. While I talk about Arctic Curry Club. So, Arctic Career Club is a book that I read at the beginning of January. It was supposed to be my December TBR, but it was carried over by a day or two. It wasn't a big deal. It was just, you know, I slumped hard in December. So, I really enjoyed this. This is a contemporary, but not in... It's not like a smutty contemporary. It's not overly romantic. 
it is more about it is about a relationship um but it's more about her finding herself and her heritage and enjoying learning about her heritage again after blocking a lot of things out when she was younger so although it does have some um romantic relationship parts to it it wasn't overly smutty i don't think it was smutty at all really i'm gonna put some really light orange in the center of my eyeball and i'm just doing this very lightly because i'm trying to do a gradient of orange in case you can't tell and i'm trying to go really light in the middle it was it's more of a journey of her finding herself and it was really sweet and i gave this four stars because it wasn't it wasn't like amazingly written or anything and it wasn't groundbreaking it was a nice easy to read contemporary but i read it quite quickly once i'd got into it and it was just very very nice it literally looks like i'm doing nothing but i'm doing my eyeballs so we are next going to move on to my other four star read vampire academy I really, really loved this. So this was part of the VA along that was run by Liv from Living Magical Bookland. If you don't know who Liv is, where have you been? She is the lovely co-host of Royal Readathon, and her and Becca have been friends for a long time. And I was introduced to Liv through Becca. And Liv has introduced me to the wonderful world of Vampire Academy. And Miss Olivia, I am so thankful for you introducing me to the bookish um, Vampire Academy. Because I watched the film, not realising it was part of a bookish um, series, like franchise situation. And I'm so glad that I read this. It is slightly different to the film, but I... I really enjoyed it. The characters are great. The only thing that would held me back is, obviously I know it's a YA. I am fully well aware it's a YA. Um, I just, and maybe I'm just used to reading so much adult recently. I just missed a bit of smut. Not going to lie. Um, I'm just going to blend this out because it's very harsh. Um, I just missed a bit of smut. Um, but that's just me thing. That's not a book thing, that's not the book's fault. It's why yeah, it was obvious it wasn't gonna be very smutty. Um and it was just a very good, easy, quick read. The writing style was lovely. And just <sighs> when you when a book is well written and you could just it just flows. And everything just makes you feel content. That is how I felt reading that book. I did laugh in places and I you know, you get secondhand cringe from people being really weird. There was a character in here that just says things, and I'm just like, mm -hmm, cringe. But that just that's not, that's just I just really enjoy that. Hmm. There we go. That's been blended out. We're now getting into the black. We are now getting into the black, and the black is the devil. The black is the devil. So, we are now moving on to, do you know what, I've just totally missed one, did I miss one? Do you know what? I've missed a book off this list. Three stars. Um, if you were on any of my lives this month, you will know that um, there's something that has caught my eye called Ice Planet Barbarians. <laughs> and, and I got on that hype. I did. I'm not going to lie. I got on the hype. I was struggling to concentrate on anything other than 
that because everyone was going on about how good it was and how I needed to try it and I was just like, you know what? Stuff it. And I did. I'm going into it's gonna look a bit crazy. You'll have to bear with promise it'll work. Um I'm just gonna do this side on camera because I feel like this is a side that you can see better. So Ice Planet Barbarians is fun. And if you are not into smut, it's not going to be your thing. It really isn't. You don't mind a bit of smut, you don't mind a bit of fantasy, fantasy smut, um, then this is going to be your kind of thing. It. <laughs> the reason it got three stars is because it is nothing exceptional. The smut was good, but as you can expect, there's not a whole heap of plot going on. There is a basic plot. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm gonna give it that. There is a. There is a very basic plot. Um. But you know, you know, you know, going in that it is very much about. Um. <laughs> Blue aliens and their spurs. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what we're gonna go with. Blue aliens and their spurs. And things that are ribbed. Basically. So there, that was um that was Ice Planet Barbarians for you. It was it was a fun time. We were here for a good time, not a long time. Do you know what I mean? And it was definitely a good time. We're gonna be packing some more of the orange. Can someone tell me why? Every time I fall in love, it seems to be at the wrong time. You walked into my life. Star. Whoa. So this was a reread for me and this was, um, I read this for the Recreate Book Club pick um, and it was Ashley's pick this month and it, it was still a very good book for me. It doesn't get a five star because the pacing is a little bit off in the beginning. It does take a while to pick up. Um, and I'm not averse to a slow book, but only when it's warranted, do you know what I mean? And I just feel like this could have done with a little bit more, a little bit more pace in places where it sort of like lulled a bit. But basically this follows a girl called Law who was part, there's different houses and every seven years the gods are changed into mortals and they have to take part in something called the Agon which is basically a free for all and if you kill a god then you can take the powers and become that god and then at the end of this seven day Agon um, <laughs> basically like I don't know what it's called like it's not a trial it's it's like a um, challenge situation <laughs> It's like seven days and if if you've if you kill a god and you can you can ascend after the seven days as a god and then I, when it next comes around you've got to like defend your title kind of thing. Um so it does bring up a lot of Greek gods which I don't know much about. I really I remember reading this the first time and I was like I'm going to Find out more about some Greek gods and goddesses. I'm gonna read out. I'm gonna read upon it, and then I never did. So I'm gonna say that again. I do want to read up more about Greeks and Greek Greek gods and goddesses. I think I might understand some of the motivations behind some of the actions of the characters and some of the um, feelings towards each other. I don't know if um, because there's there's feelings involved, like. 
Certain gods dislike each other. Um, certain gods have bonds that others don't. And I don't know if that's something that's part of normal Greek mythology or whether it was just part of um, the plot of this story, if that makes sense. There we go. We have wings. So, I give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a bit of a love romance situation, which it is a YA. It's going to happen, isn't it? Would it have still been good without it? Yes. Am I mad about it? No. There's also queer rep in this. Can never deny some good queer rep. So. Next up, we have the five stars. So this, solo leveling, was five star read for me. I can't even remember how I came across this graphic novel. I really like it. It's about a guy that has zero... He's in, he lives in a world where people are warriors and you are ranked and once you have once you are ranked and given a level you cannot move above that level so he's a really low level hunter and gets involved in these dungeons that he shouldn't be getting involved in he almost gets himself killed on a daily basis and <laughs> he ends up in a, um, a level e dungeon and he's a d or something i can't remember what level it is but yeah there's more to him than meets the eye, I think. Sorry, I've got like... <laughs> um, something happens and I can't give it away because it literally it just would spoil the whole thing. And it makes me think that there's a lot more to come from this character. I think there's only three volumes of this out so far. So it's very early days in this series and it was adapted from a web... A light, a light novel, I think it's called. Um slash web series I think yeah web comic that was turned into like a light graphic novel and then it's turned into like actual graphic novels so this was the only graphic novel I read this month and I loved it oh so this was one of the graphic novels I read this month and I loved it the other one I read was well it's a manga I reread volume 7 of One Piece if you know me you know that I love One Piece. I have yet to finish the first arc and what I'm going to do is once I finish the full arc I will review the full thing because it's like multiple volumes in one and if I reviewed each individual volume there's over a hundred volumes I do not have the time to review each individual volume and they're really small anyway so yes this follows a young lad called Luffy who He's determined to be the King of Pirates, but in order to be the King of Pirates, he needs to get the One Piece. And the One Piece you can only find on the Grand Line, which is the most dangerous, treacherous area of sea to travel across. Pirates have tried and died, and all in all in like the hopes of getting the One Piece. And he's a young lad, and nobody believes he can do it. And he sets off by himself, and this is very absurd. You have to go into this knowing it is very, very absurd. It's kind of like the hat makers in the middle grade. It's, it's just nonsensical. He's made of rubber because he ate a devil fruit. And every time you eat a devil fruit, different devil fruits give you different powers. And obviously the, the big bads in, the, in this series are other people that have had devil fruits that have given them different abilities. So his is that he's turned into like this rubber man who is basically indestructible and the only thing that can damage him is water so take of that or what you will it's but it's so good but like I said it requires commitment because there are a hundred volumes and they are difficult to get hold of so <laughs> you know it is what it is Next five star read we have The Hat Makers. This was such a great read. If you are the kind of person who likes whimsical middle grade, again, very nonsensical. You have to suspend your disbelief. It, it's just, it's just so good. One thing I will say, it doesn't mark it down a star for me at all, but one thing I will say is that it leads you to believe it's one thing and it kind of turns out not to be that thing. So, 
what it says on the synopsis isn't necessarily the whole the whole plot of the book. It kind of leads into something else, if that makes sense. So it mentions in the plot, well, it's, it's in the synopsis anyway. In the synopsis it mentions that um, Cordelia's father goes missing. And despite that being brought up during the book, that's not primarily what the book is about. Um, by the looks of it, that's kind of a setup for the next book. But for me, that didn't take away from the book at all. I still thoroughly enjoyed Cordelia and Goose and it's just... Do you know like Home Alone where the adults are just so ridiculously stupid that you don't know how they adult? It's kind of like that. The bads, the bads are like that. The adults are like that. Um, but it's just, it was just fun. Really, really fun. And obviously, as always, middle grade, there's a moral to the story. And I can't fault it. Tamsin Merchant did an amazing job of narrating the book. And, yeah. It's really difficult for me to say things about books that I really like. I don't know what else to say other than, yes, it was amazing. I suggest you read it. And I've got map makers on the way to me. And I can't wait. So, I've just realised I've not been telling you what I've been doing. So all I did was put some mascara on, which was um, L'Oreal Paris Ecstatic Mascara. And the eyeliner that I used was the 24 Hour Felt um, Collection Extreme Liner. And it was literally just to line my eyes so I could put some eyelashes on. So yeah, there's that. On to my next five star read. There are quite a few five stars in here. This is just ridiculous. So my next five star read, Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is not in my top three of the month, but it was so good. So this follows on from um, Finale, um, the Caraval series. I say it follows on, it has some um, one of the same characters in it. Um, it's a difference, actually it has three of the same characters, but yeah. So it basically follows a girl called Evangeline who makes a deal with one of the fates and um, regrets it. Regrets it because of reasons. I can't really say more than that. If you've read Caraval, there's a character in here from Caraval. Um, if you haven't read Caraval and you are going to be reading it, don't read this book because it will spoil the ending of Caraval. Um, if you are not bothered about reading this, the Caraval series and you just want to read this, then that's fine as long as you're aware that it will spoil the ending of Caraval. Just saying. But, um, Evangeline is a great character and I like the fact that she's flawed. She she the whole premise of this is like she's made this mistake. She's trying to correct it and she doesn't know how. Um and the betrayals and twists and turns and again it's very YA, very it's nothing too overly political, but you know, betrayals, a bit of romance, potential romance, will they won't they kind of situation and we still don't know what's going on I can't wait for book two but the title current running title um of book two doesn't board well um so I'm not sure about that I think I might get my heart broken um duo lash glue in black I put it on my eyelid because I find that it helps. The eyelash stick. And there we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. See, it's getting closer and closer to the end. It's harder to choose which one to prefer. 
So the next one. Can we just take a second, take a moment of silence? This book. This goddamn book. Jirang Jie Zhao. I'm sorry if I butchered that. I freaking loved this book. From the moment I started reading it, I thought that I was going to like it. But when you read the synopsis, um, and when you start reading the book, I was like, okay, this is going to be... I knew there was, um, obviously, just, just to let you know as well, it is already out there in the public eye, and the author has also mentioned it before. This does have um, a poly relationship depicted in it. Um, but I will say that romance, despite being a part of the book, is not the main plot and doesn't take over the plot, which again, praise to the author, praise to the author is all I can say at this moment in time. Um, I thought I knew exactly where this was going to go and I did not. I did not. My heart was broken, it was torn into many a pieces and I have not recovered. Sorry, I'm just trying to... I have not recovered and I need book two. I need book two like yesterday. This follows a young girl called Zheng Chin. I am really sorry if I mispronounced that, but I d I've listened to it a million times now and I think that's the right pronunciation. This is kind of like sci-fi fantasy, historical fiction. It's all melded into one. It's okay, so you've got pilots that are boys and they pilot these big chrysalises um, and they fight these evil beings called the Hundwins and it's everybody's dream to do that. They become celebrities, they get all this praise, but the girls are basically sacrificed as concubines. Um, they, they use this thing called chi, and basically when the boys take the girls into battle, um, the girls end up being sacrificed to make the boys stronger and win these battles, to win this war and nobody seems to care that women are sacrificed. I will say that this is quite hard hitting. There is um, a scene, uh, the scenes of abuse, um, discussions around um, physical abuse and um, sexual abuse. So trigger warnings, just look up trigger warnings, all I'm saying, trigger warnings for this. But it didn't, it was, the, those kinds of things were not used to push the plot forward. They weren't used as just devices for no reason. It it was just so good. I don't know how to, else to explain this without spoiling it. But this main character, she's fierce. She is just an absolute force to be reckoned with. And she is my kind of gal. And I'm telling you now that if you like a good, strong female protagonist that takes zero shit that knows her worth and knows that what she may do may go against the grain but she's going to do it because it's the right thing to do and she does not back, back down to misogyny and just it's such an empowering empowering is the word empowering is a empowering book empower i love love it empowering is the word for that book i'm gonna put these two together because i don't know which one to choose um, so these are joint second faves. Joint second faves. These are joint second faves. Um, a Call of the Flames and Crescent City by Miss Sarah J Mass. Miss Sarah J Mass, what are you doing to my brain? You fried my brain. You dissolved it, and there is nothing left. I could not compute or function for a good half an hour after I read both of these books because obviously size do like them thick but seriously Sarah J Mass, what are you doing? So for those of you who don't know Sarah J Mass writes great books Cost of the Flames 
obviously we all know part of the Akatar series is like the second arc of books I'm think I think and it follows the perspectives of Ness and I keep saying Nessian Nesta and Cassian I have said this in my vlogs I have said this in my tweets and I'm gonna say this again with my full chest hear me now if you see anywhere in the social media world that people are saying she does not know how to do mental health rep or she does not discuss anything of any significance in her books then these people have not read the books properly in both this book and in Crescent City the mental health rep is so different the two different types of the two different people dealing with the mental health issues in two different ways but the rep is so good and Nesta's nastiness in this I don't relate to but her feelings about herself the breakdown oh my god the breakdown the mountain scene I sobbed my absolute black heart out this is making me tear up the, oh my god I've just done my makeup stop it stop it the mm, the scene the mountain if you've read this you know that broke me so hard and I'm trying not to cry again because I've literally just done my fucking makeup but I'm telling you now this will change your perspective on everything <laughs> and yes there's a lot of smut in this not gonna lie the smut was freaking amazing it was top tier shit this just five five stars all across the board. Tens, 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 tens. It was amazing. Yeah. If you don't like smut, you're probably not gonna like the smutty parts of this. But if you can deal with skipping the smut, and if you just want a book that deals with mental health rep, like mental health in a different way, that will give you a different view on someone who struggles with mental health issues, I would recommend you pick this up, please. Don't listen to the trolls on Twitter and social media. Sarah J Math does good rep. Um, and also Crescent City, same Bryce. Can we hunt? Hunt, hunt Athala, come on. Come on now, Sarah J Maths. You do love a good, um, strong male character and alpha hole, don't you? You do You do like a good alpha character in a, in a book. I, I can't, I can't fault it. Um, what were, again, the one thing I would say about this is, yes, it has a little bit of smut in, but, again, it's, it's not the main premise, it's not, not the main plot point of the book, and, not gonna lie, if this Hunt Bryce situation was just a platonic thing, and, there was never any romantic aspects to this book I would have still five starred it I would have still loved it because the majority of this book is about familial or platonic like found family relationships um, and the things you will do for the people that you love in a platonic way <laughs> so as, as well as in a romantic way so it's it's just it's just amazing and I can't wait to read book two in Feb so if you've been following if you've been following my vlogs and my reading for the month you will know that there is a book in this list that is missing and that my friends middle game and this looking was inspired by obviously this and the black is from the cover middle game this was a pick from this was Ro's recommendation for the book that I pick out of my 12 books 12 prompts challenge and Jesus Christ Ro thank you so much this book oh my god there's not that many tabs in it but I don't tab I don't tab and this is tabbed this was confusing in parts this was eye-opening in parts and I'm not gonna lie this I'm gonna sound crazy 
but this is kind of a mix of alchemy and science and the way the science has developed in recent years I can kind of see things like this not actually being that far off being real in my brain because obviously I watch well I don't know in my brain this could be a thing this could literally happen I'm gonna sound totally crazy saying that but it follows Roger and Dodger and they are made as a two halves of this doctrine and one is supposed to be the language side and one is supposed to be the numbers and math side and the these two halves are supposed to they were created by this arrogant alchemist called James, is it James? I think it was James. His surname is Reed anyway. Um and he is under the impression that if he can it's like, oh, it's like a science experiment. It's just like, if he can control the conditions around how these kids grow up and he can manipulate things into going his way, he can basically control these two halves of this doctrine which would then dictate how the world works, basically. And that sounds very grandiose, and it is. He, in his brain, he can control these two kids and they have like, they have many twins that they've created and they, they're trying to see which one sticks. It is genuinely like Frankenstein of the future using like magic and al like magic and science mixed together rather than like old school, you know, like, you know, old school Frankenstein. It's like a new age Frankenstein. I am not explaining this as well as I want to because it's just, it flits back between, it flits between like the current situation and the past and how the, how Roger and Dodger will come to be, come to be made and grew up. And um, it also changes to following a bit of read on occasion. I when you think you know what is happening in this book, you don't. I, you, you just don't. You think you think you know, and then you're like, oh shit, no. And every time you think you're getting progress, something happens, and it's like one step forward, fifty steps back. It's it is an absolute rush until the end. And the you literally do not get a resolution until the end, and you think you do, and then it's like nope, that's like it. I can understand why Rose says she's still a bit confused about the book because I can't do this any justice by explaining the synopsis to you. Like the synopsis doesn't even give you an insight into the book. Like me explaining it after reading it, I could reread this a million times and I probably still wouldn't do it justice. I am imploring you. Yes, I used a big word. I used a big word. I'm imploring you. You out there, fantasy reader. I see you. Pick this book up. You? You? I know you're watching. Pick this up. This is amazing. I pre ordered book two. I really need it now. Book two, I have double checked, doesn't follow the same characters. The fact that book two doesn't follow the same characters is is just more questions in the brain, more questions in the brain. Sean and Maguire, you you literally snapped me. I this is five hundred is five hundred pages. This is five hundred and fourteen pages of pure chaos. And I want more of it. It's made me want to pick up the Wayward Children series and um, I just don't know, I just don't know what I'm going to do myself until the second book comes out. So yeah, the makeup look that I created today was based off of Middle Game. So that was my favourite book of the month. My first favourite of 2022. And I think a lot of people that have followed me would have expected it maybe to be Crescent City or a Court of Silver Flames. But this book shocked me in the best way. 
and the fact that I this this month I have had so many four and five stars it was very difficult to pick between them all but even now I'm still thinking as much as as much as I do love the Sarah Jamas books right now I'm still thinking about middle game I'm still trying to in my brain work out what's going on it's one of those books that will keep you thinking and honestly please read it This is the very first Books and a Beat. I, over time, I think I will get better at talking and doing my makeup. At the same time, I will also get better at explaining things, but this is my first go, so please be gentle with me. Um, if you would like more book talk, let me know. If you would like more tutorial-esque type things, I can give it a go instead. I'm happy and open to suggestions. But this is my very first time trying to do my makeup while talking to the camera and picking up books and, you know, a whole shebang. And I'm going to have to now try and edit this down into a reasonable length of video. That'll be something you'll want to watch. Because this is currently sitting at over an hour. Over an hour um, of footage that I'm going to have to edit the fuck down, so... Any any ideas, hints, tips, tricks that you've got for me, please feel free to comment them down below. Anything constructive, I'm happy to take on board. Um, if you want more book talk during the wrap-ups, can do. More makeup talk. I will leave all the products linked down below that I use. It is going to be a trial and error with this series um, as to what what is the right balance. Okay, so just bear with me. And also, I will I would take my hair down, but it's greasy, and I'm literally filming my February, my January. Yeah, I'm literally filming my January haul, and then I'm getting a shower and washing this hair. So, yeah, bear with me while I get to grips with doing this type of thing. But I appreciate all of you who support me, no matter what. And I will see you all very soon. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. And I'll see you in my next video.